Hi there, Justin from sharepickers.com here and uh, this is the second video of two in which I talk about how I set up a chart to look at moving averages and uh, also now relative strength and MACD. So someone sent me an email saying, I, you know, I hear the podcast, I listen to the podcast, you talk to uh, technical analysts a lot. They talk about moving averages all the time. I don't understand what they mean. So the first one there has already been out. So if you've not seen that, search for that one uh, under Share Pickers there on the YouTube channel. And do me a favor, if you find this helpful in any way, uh, just give it a thumbs up on YouTube or leave a comment and give it a thumbs up because it does help uh, with search and traffic there. And of course, suggest any other videos you'd like me to do. Um, I'm no expert. I'm a private investor that's been doing it. It's a passion of mine. I've loved it. I've always loved stocks and shares. So I try and learn as I go. And I'm not always right, of course, but uh, you know, making mistakes is where you learn. So here we go. Uh, last week, as I said, we went to um, a site called investing.com. I'm going to go back there uh, because I do use Pro Real Time, which is the best sort of online charting software around, but it's very complex. Uh, I say complex. It takes a, a bit of getting used to. Um, so I'm going to use investing.com. It's free, and they have a good little charting package there. So uh, it's free to set up the, uh, an account here as well. So let's go to a chart I looked at on the last one. Uh, standard chart. You should type in Stan at the top there. Uh, make sure it's the London one because they're also listed elsewhere. And click Yes. And it takes you to this page here. Oh, look at that. Last fall, 7.76%. Uh, not nice. It takes you to the page which shows you the fundamentals and news, all that stuff. I want to click here, Technical Chart. But hang on. If you're from last week, do you remember that I said you can preload a chart you've already saved? And that's by going to the little cloud icon, icon here. And... There we are. That's the one I saved from last time. So I'll do that. And it should load it, hopefully. Yeah, is it? Yes, there we are. Click the bigger screen. And we're back to where I was last week. Uh, and of course, I started this chart without any of these moving averages on here at all. Uh, so let's click uh, to expand. So if you didn't see that, basically go to the first video. You can see how to set up the chart. And then we move on to this bit. Now, down the bottom there, they've got volume as well. Uh, and volume's an excellent indica indicator. And maybe one I'll look at again. But uh, for this chart, for this uh, video, it's it's not uh, needed. So I'll click that. And all we have there is the price action there, uh, candles, and the moving averages, four moving averages. You can see them here. 20, 50, 125, 200. The reason why I look at, I mean, basically, apart from the 125, all of those there are quite standard uh, moving averages. Simple moving averages they are, because they aren't simple. Um, but I like the 125, because I had to, uh, when I'm on the show, um... Uh, Weisenberg, Simon Weisenberg, who's a quant fund trader, and he was saying, that, look at the 125 on indices, it's quite good. If you look at the S&P or the FTSE, you can see there's a lot of resistance support there on the 125. And he came up with stats saying something like, uh, over the last, you know, I don't know how many years, the S&P, but it goes back a long time. He said, generally, when the price is below the, the 125, it's, 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 it's bearish. When it's above, it's bullish. So I've always added that, and I quite like it, and it does sort of play out quite well. Anyway, so we've got those indicators on there. What do I add now to the charts that I look at? This is, this is, there, are, there are hundreds of indicators, but I've got, you know, friendly and familiar with these sort of, uh, I saw three, I suppose, indicators. Uh, moving averages. Relative strength of MACD. So here we go. Uh, sorry, wrong. Don't click that. Let's just set the, click the indicator tab here. Scroll down, and you will see, first of all, MACD. That's moving average convergence divergence. Now, it's a very complex uh, sort of description as to how this works. But essentially, it's a, a constant moving average, nine days in that, and two other long and short moving averages. But it, you can look in the definition and I could read it out, but do you know I never remember it, and that just goes to show how complex it is. But essentially, it's this: it plots two moving averages, all right, a red and a blue one. And there are certain levels you can look at. We can see uh, that's you know very telling on the share price. So uh, here's the zero line here. When the moving averages cross this, the MACDs crosses, it's supposed to be very bullish or bearish. If it's going up across this zero line, it's it's bullish. If it's going down, it's bearish. All right, so that's the first thing to look at when you're looking at MACDs. Secondly, when they converge or diverge, as they are here, like the blue line's coming down, all of a sudden it uh, crosses over the red line. This is supposed to be quite bullish. And you can see it happens here, and the share price hasn't moved yet. But it comes up a bit further, and the share price starts moving. So almost the price, it's almost a, you know, a, a, a lagging you know, indicator here. So that's a good sign here. And again, it starts crossing over here. The share price hasn't really moved that much. All of a sudden, it tips below the zero, 
and the share price drops. So you can see it's a very good indicator as to look where this goes. And if you put these on a, like I say, a, a, if I go on a weekly, it's even stronger on a weekly. And you can see here now, look how low it's gone here. At, you know, minus 80, which you can see hasn't done since way back here, when it was 2012. And yet it's starting to diverge. The blue has crossed the red and it's starting to come up. That's why I think it's quite a bullish sign here. Obviously, it's nowhere near the zero line. But hopefully, this will start to tick up a little bit here. Uh, let's let's go back a little bit, scroll out, and see if we can see another example. There's an excellent example here. Look, so the price has topped out here at uh, 19 quid. Can you believe that? Like four pound, was it four pound forty at the moment? So that was in 2011. Um, so we can see it crossed over the zero here, and as we, consequently, it's gone down since that time. And at the bottom here, it converged and diverged. And all of a sudden, started rising. Went over the zero line, started rising. So you can see, it's a very good indicator to look at. It's not the only one you should rely on. You should look at moving averages as well, and this next indicator that I'm going to do. But it's a good, you know, it's like I said, it is an indicator. That's all it is. It's not the indicator. It's an indicator. So that's why I like, uh, 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 you know, moving. And if I, do you know what? There's a chart I always look at. If I, I don't know if I can get it up on here. So let's go for the FTSE 100 there. Yeah, I like that. Oh, hang on, I didn't need to do that, did I? So uh, let's go back to um, uh, loading that previous standard chart. Uh, standard charters. I messed up there. Sometimes that will happen. Um, oh, what's happened here? Uh, take me back. Oh, there we go. So that's uh, uh, yeah. There's a FTSE 100 index. All right, and. Let's go into uh, a bigger screen view of that. Let's go to candles. And we're on a weekly chart here, uh, I think daily or oh, daily chart. Let's go to a a month chart of the FTSE. All right, so this will go back quite a way. Look, we're back at uh, 2004 here. Now, of course, when you're on a monthly chart, each one of these candles is a month worth of action. Let's add a MACD and you can see here what's happening. As you can see, it crossed over the zero here, rose, and it, it converged somewhere down here. They haven't got the data to load that, load that, but it crossed the zero, very bullish. All of a sudden, you know, way before, this is, uh, you know, 2006, this is way before the crash. You start to see convergence here of the MACDs. All of a sudden, they, they drop up there. Then, a definite you know, divergence there of the red-blue, and... Here we had the financial crash. Then, when should you go back into the indices? Well, how about when this happened? That bottomed out, crossed there. And look at that. If you'd gone in there and gone really long on the FTSE at this time, a cracking bit of upside. And it crossed the zero. Didn't really then, you know, diverge then again until um, 2011. That's when we had a bit of a, a bit of a correction there. And again, it didn't cross the zero line here, though. But look at this now. It's coming down. It's diverged here. You could have said... That there, 2014, was pretty much messing around with the highs, but they're still declining. So what does this say for today's uh, stock market? It doesn't bode well. They are crossing the um, the zero line, which is not good. But having said that, look at that. The blue is coming up a bit, so we could recover here. But generally, when that's happened, when it's gone over the zero line, and in fact, I've, got, I've looked on a different charting package, and it's gone back uh, previous to the 2000 crash, 2001 crash, and it's just three times. Only the last twice this has happened that the, the, the MACDs have gone over the zero uh, was in 2001 dot com crash and the uh, financial crash. And it's happened again. So you're thinking, that isn't a good sign. It's quite prescient. Anyway, let's go back to loading the chart to standard charted. Uh, so you can go from the little cloud there and it lo loads a daily chart as we are there. So let's add, um, like I said, the MACD again because it's come off. I didn't save that there. And uh, there we are. There's MACD. Let's get rid of the volume. Give it more room. And uh, one more indicator I want to add, and that is the relative strength. And this is um, it's a good sign. So we've got relative strength, the RSI, sometimes it's called. And again, generally they've got a band here right at the bottom. So you can see this band. And that's at 70 and 30. Now, in general terms, people say when the price is above 70, it's overbought. You know, it's overheating. It's like a, a cool-off. So let's see if this plays out. 
Uh, so there, for example, yeah, it was overbought. It started coming down. Through the band, this is a normal trading range. I know when it gets to 50, which is right in the middle there, if it's going below 50, it's a bit bearish. Above 50, it's, uh, you know, attacking the, if it's attacking the 50 line from um, above, going below it, it's bearish. If it's attacking it from below, going above it, that's quite bullish. So it's grinding down here, see? 50. Now, look at that. Way down here at uh, 5, 6. That is oversold. So you can see... Uh, if you'd have bought off this, you you know it wouldn't have been good for you really. So you, this is why you've got to, you know, use it in conjunction with other indicators because it's still kept going down, and you can be a stock can be overbought or oversold for a prolonged period of time. So don't rely on this. You know, wait until you see a change in sentiment if you're going to go long or short. Um, so there we are. But it did bounce back after this. But if you'd gone, you know, long there, and uh, on the fact it's oversold, you'd have lost a bit of money here, down here, to, and it only really got back a little bit above where it was when it was oversold. So, like I said, you should use this in conjunction with this, in conjunction with the moving averages. Because, look, if you'd um, use a 20-day moving average and waited, say, okay, it's oversold, it's converged here, so it's going to make a move, hopefully. Let's wait. You know, tipped it there. You may have been lost a bit of money if you'd bought above there then. Let's have a look if it stayed above that. Did it stay above the 20-day moving here? No, look at that. It didn't really stay. The price didn't stay above that 20-day moving average. So that's not very... Uh, but should, so what you need is a strong trading date through that 20-day moving average and there. But remember, this is not good. The trend is always your friend. And these trend lines, these moving averages show a trend. And the trend is down. They're all going downwards. They're all facing down. So you are battling a downward trend. The trend is your friend. Never fight the trend unless you're in very short term. You know, you will lose money if you go against the trend. Basic, you know, it's a, one of the most basic golden rules of investing. And that's uh, try not to fight the trend because it's essentially like swimming against the, 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 the current, you know. Yes, you can make a bit of headway, but it's hard work. And in, and in the end, it will take you with it, you know. So don't fight that trend. Uh, so let's have a look here then. It's always good to use the rise of strength as well. Like you would price action in a chart. So you can see a, you know, a bottom or a double bottom here and then a rise up. So here we go. So we can see a bottom here, another bottom here, but it's higher. It, 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 it rose up strongly here, didn't get over, over, overbought, then came back down and tested this. So if you draw a line you know, going up there, you can see essentially the oversold nature of this is getting less pronounced. And so it's rising slowly. So that's what I'm saying. Right now, since I lasted the chart on, on, on Standard Chartered, it has changed somewhat. And so, has the view changed? By the way, you can grab this on the side of the chart there and, and make it more pronounced or expand the range you're looking at. Look at this. So I did say last time this is probably a double bottom. And uh, it shouldn't really go below this. If it does go below this, you know you're wrong. You know, we, you know it, Basically, that's it. I'm wrong. I should get out. Um, but where's the support now? So we've had this dip. And you would have thought, after this breakaway, second time it had a problem breaking the previous highs. You see this high here, a uh, problem breaking that previous high, and so it's coming back a bit. So where will it come back to? So hopefully it won't come back down to this, because uh, your triple bottoms are, do happen, but uh, it, it's, you know, it's, it's not strong conviction in the price of a triple bottom. So where are we looking at? Where are we thinking that this should come back to? Because you just have to look at the chart, the candles, and hang on a sec. So, you know, MACDs are, are, are converging, heading southwards, not good. So is the relative strength. So if we look at the relative strength, where are we hoping to go? If we draw a line here, you know, I'm, I'm hoping, looking at the price action, that we're not going to go... This is what I quite like. You just have to look for support and resistance levels, right? And hopefully judge on where it went last time. So... It's below that that level there, which was the last bit of uh, resistance. But look at this candle here. This is quite telling. Last few days. Let's zoom in. This candle here, the bottom of that candle, where we had a bit of an up and down day, bottom of that candle is now where it closed, 438. So hopefully we may see a bounce here. Hopefully, you know? If not, where's the next support level? Just keep looking. If you look... Remember, previous uh, resistance equals, uh, you know, future support. So where it's had problems bouncing up before, uh, then that would create good support for it. So the, uh, sort of the support there, 
And do you know what? I'm thinking, yeah. I'm hoping it won't go below this level because at the next level down, we'll probably be around this level. Obviously, you've got, you know, good sort of support generally around figures. You've got the £4 level. It'd be nice if it went to that and, you know, and did continue upward because it just shows then that it's putting another bottom that's higher than these two bottoms. I mean, this one is lower than this one. And if we put another one now here on a big sell-off and it's higher, that's good. It's called higher lows. And that's a nice sign. So we'll just to wait and see where that is. Uh, I'm, I'm struggling to find you know, any kind of resistance there. That's a that's a quite a nice support. Yeah, four or five. So let's see. We'll see what happens. To that that's uh, anyway. That's a, a chart. There. I hope you like that. I dragged on a bit. Sorry, I'm boring myself at some point there. But if you got any you know uh, you know value from this, please please give me a thumbs up on YouTube there. Leave a comment if you'd like to see anything else on uh, on the chart, and I'll be gladly do it. I wanted to do a week chart in this to see um, a week's worth of price action to see what the difference is in the in the MACD here. So let's go to a week. Um, oh yeah, I quite like this. You know, it's 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 a good sign on the week. It's converging here. Look at that on a weekly. Remember these are more pronounced. And in fact, it's worth doing this sometimes when you can't find support. At, you know, yeah. So we got uh, three seventy there. Yeah, three seventy four pound doesn't like it doesn't like go below four pound a lot, does it? As you can see on a weekly chart, it doesn't end, doesn't finish below four pound. It's always worth going out if you can't find a, you know a, a, a daily pattern you quite like. Go to the weekly. And just reassure yourself that we're still in the, you know, the um, in the trading range here between 30 and 70. It's not oversold anyway. It is climbing up a little bit. Uh, we have a little pullback, but the, they are converging here, diverging. I mean, and heading towards a zero, which is a good sign. So I'm relatively, relatively confident. Hopefully, this will um, head towards uh, a higher level in the next few trading days. And like I said, if you want to save a chart, you can just go to that. And now I can save this. And it's saved all the indicators on there that I put on there. So next time you come here, you just download that saved uh, format from the cloud and it will be there. So thank you very much for watching. As a, click the thumbs up and give me a comment. Much appreciated. Speak soon.